This video is brought to you by Wix. What's up guys, Jared here with another Wisecrack vlog. It's been quite the summer. The 22 film long Avengers Infinity Saga ended along with the 73 episode long Game of Thrones. And as I'm sure you know, the two endings received widely different reactions. Now we've already dissected the narrative and structural elements of these two conclusions, so don't worry, I'm not here to beat that dead horse. But I am here to hopefully rethink the problem altogether. What if ending Game of Thrones in a satisfying way was actually impossible? What if the reason we love the show is the same reason it could never gracefully end? To figure that out, we have to understand how narrative works, why it's changing, and possibly discover how video games cause this whole mess. Welcome to this Wisecrack vlog on finales, and obviously spoilers ahead for Endgame and Game of Thrones. But before we get to it, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsors over at Wix. Everything is online nowadays, and if an employer is looking up your name, you definitely want the first search result to come up with something positive. With Wix's advanced SEO optimization, your site will be the first thing that comes up in the search and allow you to put your best foot forward in every situation. In our previous Avengers video, we asked you to send us your Wix site, and again, you guys sent us some amazing stuff. Today, I wanna to feature the work of Justine. Justine offers personalized piano lessons and her site is complete with tutorial vids, warm-up exercises, and more. Like Justine, I've also made a personalized website using Wix to promote my side hustle as a voiceover artist. You can use any of their beautiful pre-designed templates or do what I did and start from scratch. They've got all sorts of features. You can put a store on there, run polls, or feature YouTube videos like Justine. So don't miss out on any professional opportunities by ensuring that you've got a great looking site that really celebrates your skills. Your next internship or job could come from traffic to your site, so create your own website for free today. Go to wix.com slash wisecrack or click here to get started. And now, back to the show. First, we should note that we're talking about the difference between movies and serialized TV. That is, TV with long overarching plots, a la Game of Thrones, Dexter, The Sopranos, etc. By contrast, in a movie, traditionally, a conflict must be presented that resolves by the end. Now, this understanding gets tricky not only because of art films that push boundaries, but also more mainstream cliffhanger films like The Matrix Reloaded, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, or Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. But for the most part, cinema has largely been characterized by a conflict that prompts some kind of meaningful transformation. Even the interconnected Infinity Saga films, save for Infinity War, have central conflicts that resolve within their particular installment. Tony Stark has to stop Stain and the violent cycle of arms dealing, T'Challa needs to bring Wakanda out of their isolation and defeat radicalism, and Doctor Strange needs to embrace the mystical in order to stop Cassilius and Dormammu. Their goals reach completion, unlike in Game of Thrones, where, for example, Daenerys' goal to become the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms is introduced in Episode 7. <laughs> and doesn't get resolved until many, many episodes later. At the bare minimum, something needs to happen in a movie. Michael needs to become the Godfather, Batman needs to defeat the Joker, and Andy Dufresne needs to find freedom. And for a while, the same standard was largely leveled at television. Larry, Curly, and Moe need to cause a mess, Ricky or Lucy need to learn a lesson, and the crew of the Enterprise has to extricate themselves from whatever problem is posed by the Alien of the Week. For most of film and TV history, it's been generally agreed that stories need a beginning, middle, and end. But some would say that something has changed. We're now obsessed with the middle. Writer Richard J. Allen claims that technology is eroding our old as Aristotle storytelling model. Aristotle's OG text on literary theory, Poetics, basically boils down to suggesting that playwrights stick to one subject and focus on a shift that takes place in a character, from bad to good fortune, or from good to bad. This structure is based on the idea of catharsis, that our emotions get purified or purged when these conflicts find their resolution. Now, Aristotle originally attributed this phenomenon to a feeling we get when watching tragedies, but it's been used as a framework to understand dramatic structure writ large. This is the feeling we get when, after defeating his father, Quill says his final goodbye to Yondu, or when Tony sets aside his selfishness and flies the nuke into the wormhole. 
The mode in which these plays were consumed played an important role in the creation of Aristotle's model. As Allen notes, the environment in which Aristotle and his peers experienced theatrical productions was daunting. They were in outdoor arenas that seated 14 to 17,000 spectators who were eating, drinking, and often yelling at the actors. The seats were made of stone or wood, or the audience sat on the ground. In short, it was not the most comfortable setting for taking in a matinee. As such, one can understand why Aristotle would prefer plays that had established beginnings, middles, and ends. If you're gonna put on your sweaty toga and schlep your ass over to the arena for some entertainment, something better happen. There better be a takeaway. Imagine if I asked one of those crotchety Athenians to truck his ass out there for one of those Dragon Ball Z episodes where Goku screams for 22 minutes and nothing happens. He'd be rightly pissed. Fast forward to the golden age of cinema and you can imagine something similar. People used to wear their best attire when going to the movies. Or in the days of early television, the audience only had a single opportunity to watch the episode, so you had to sit there and watch the whole thing. It was a contained event, and people expected the content to be similarly contained. But these days, the entertainment landscape looks radically different. Alan notes that with digital video, social media, and smartphones, we can now consume entertainment anywhere, anytime. Thus, as he puts it, being an audience member is no longer a temporary state. Instead, the moments between viewing become mere pauses that occur during an ongoing, lifelong viewing experience. Because of the plethora of options that enable you to experience a story at any time, Alan argues that we are less conditioned to expect a definitive transformation or predictable conclusion. Engaging with entertainment in the digital age is a completely new psychological phenomenon, one he argues appeals to much more primitive human instincts. He claims the optimal stories for the new media function on an extended middle, or an infinite stage of development. Now, certainly some serialized shows have had successful, well-received conclusions, but if we consider the failure of shows like Dexter, True Blood, Lost, The Sopranos, and of course Game of Thrones to reach a satisfying end, we can start to understand what we mean by our fixation on the extended middle. In Game of Thrones, the highly praised early seasons introduced a vast and cruel world of real politik. It also planted tons of little plots that, as the show went on, began to sprout and grow. There were occasional cathartic moments, but the real honeymoon for viewers was this stage of perpetual development. The more we watched, the more invested we became in this process. We ravenously consumed episode after episode as perpetual conflicts revealed more about Daenerys and enabled us to get to know her better. From her time with Khal Drogo, to her conquest of Slaver's Bay, to her love affair with Jon. As the show went on, the politics got more complex and we wanted to dive deeper and deeper into the nooks and crannies of the world. The show teased us with revelations about the Night King and we felt like we were getting closer to something concrete. It introduced us to new institutions like the Iron Bank of Bravos, and we felt like we were moving closer to a complete understanding of the world. The golden age of the show was one in which any catharsis, any finality, is perpetually delayed. By contrast, Marvel films were always built on a foundation of beginning, middle, and end, both within each installment and the overarching phases that built to one final conclusion, defeating Thanos. Interestingly, Alan pinpoints a specific cultural culprit for our extended journey into narrative middles, video games. In games like The Sims, Roller Coaster Tycoon, or MMOs like WoW, you cruise through a never-ending middle. After all, there's no point where you smirk with relief as you've landed your sim the job they've always wanted and can successfully close the game for good. Now, of course, this doesn't apply to all games. Some like The Last of Us or Resident Evil 2 still present a goal and build toward a conclusion. But even in a game like Skyrim, which does have a narrative end, people get lost in the limitless expanses of middle side quests. Another way to view this phenomenon is taking a cue from psychology. In a recent Wired article, writer J. David Bolter argues that the phenomenon consumers experience when engaging with modern entertainment is akin to psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's concept of flow. Bolter, citing Csikszentmihalyi, defines flow as a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even at a great cost for the sheer sake of doing it. 
This concept also gets used in sports and competitive activities. If you've ever been in the zone, you've experienced flow. For Bolter, we don't desire catharsis as much today. We prefer to lose ourselves in the flow of the viewing experience. This is what Perpetual Middle offers. It offers never-ending world-building, never-ending character development, and introductions to new plot points that promise to build to something great. Who cares if it actually ever does land at that something? The build-up is, in itself, extremely satisfying. Binge-watching serialized TV and playing video games, to quote Bolter, offers the viewer, player, or participant not only pleasure in the moment, but also the seductive possibility that the moment might go on indefinitely. Point is, if you consider this shift in media, it becomes appropriate to ask, could Game of Thrones have ever achieved a satisfying ending? Could a show built on the honeymoon period of extended middle ever really satisfy in the same way with a conclusion? A quick look at this collection of graphs that charts the IMDb scores of shows as they approach their series finale is telling. Most of the serialized shows tank when they arrive at their end, while the episodic shows maintain favorability much more gracefully. This can't be a coincidence. It can't be that all the competent writers leave before the final season, or that only episodic TV attracts talented artists. It's not that we need to stop criticizing Game of Thrones. Again, we made a whole video doing just that. But media like Game of Thrones may not be built to end like cinematic universes are. With serialized television, we don't seek the catharsis that is perhaps implicit in a contained narrative experience. One is built to end, the other to keep on going. So what do you guys think? Will the ways in which we consume media continue to transform storytelling? Will there ever be an end to a serialized TV show that's better than its extended middle? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks to all our patrons who support the channel and our podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And before you go, I want to give another shout out to Wix. In our last video, we mentioned that we'd be sharing some of our favorite Wix sites. Justine sent in her site advertising her personal piano lessons and honestly kind of made me wish I was good at piano. Continue to share your websites by emailing us using the link in the description. And if you haven't made one yet, do so at wix.com wisecrack. It's free and can only help. And as always, thanks for watching guys. Peace.